So, um, so here's, you know, the Lord just dropped like some things in my heart. Some of them will be familiar to you, but, but others of it may not be. And I felt like I was looking at the lineup and I was looking at the order of things. And, and in addition, um, our intercessors, they always pray for all the events that I come into. And so our heartbeat coming in was with all the speakers we're working as a team. You know, it's like, it's like we're a team. The Lord has given each of us a part. Um, and we, we're going to deliver that, you know, we've been put into a certain order for a reason. And so I thought, well, starting out first, then what, what, would, what do I feel like God wants to do first? And so I was really brought to John chapter 13, 8 through 10. Uh, and this is essentially, you know, Peter says to Jesus, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus says, if I do not wash you, you have no part with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. He's basically, you know, give me a shower. And Jesus said to him, but he who is bathed needs only to wash his feet, but is completely clean, and you are clean. And then he says, but not all of you refer to, to Judas, but that's not what I'm focusing on. But, but here's where I'm at. Uh, when we pray and prophesy like this, okay, together, and again, there's a portion of you who know this, you, you do this, you practice this. There's a portion of you, maybe um, we need to revisit this, and for some of you this is new, including those of you online. But when we pray like this, when we prophesy like this, uh, we have to make sure that we, are, we don't have anything in common with the things he wants us to tear down today, right? Prophets, they tear down, they also build up. Um, but we don't want to have anything in common with it because it creates the open door for a backlash and we don't need that, right? Okay. And so, um, so basically out of this passage, uh, what, what he was speaking to me was about, um, you know, we, we really, it's not that we're not clean in here. We are his righteousness because of Christ Jesus. And we are singing that, you know, that we are his righteousness. We are holy because of the blood of Jesus. That's our position. But we do need to examine our walk on a routine basis. We have to examine our feet. The feet have to get washed. <laughs> right? Right? And we have to not have anything in common with darkness. And as we are walking through life, there are things that just slip in. They slip in with all of us, even the best person. I can't tell you how many people that I know that have not finished well because they have not understood this principle. Okay? They've ministered for years and years and years. And like 60, 70, all of a sudden they're not serving God. What is that? Not washing the feet. And so there are four, key, four areas, and I have just enough time to just kind of hit them really quick. Four, four uh, areas that I'm going to hit fast that I, I wanted to bring to you. Some are familiar, some might not be. Um, but he was talking to me that, uh, you know, again, and I have been on this thing for like four straight up years strong. And he was talking to me about of Acts 16. It happened as he went to the place of prayer. A slave girl possessed with a spirit of divination, a python spirit, met us, bringing her masters much profit by fortune telling. And he's talking to me, let's focus on the python spirit. What does it do? The python spirit, it behaves, uh, you know, how, what does it do in the natural Okay, then you understand what it does in the spiritual. It squeezes the life out of you. It suffocates you. It constricts you. It confines you. It tightly restricts you into a maddening frustration. It, it brings forth, it often is what is behind spiritually, chronic breathing issues. You know, so many things we say are natural. There is a spiritual component, especially when we're prophets and, and prophetic intercessors. When I, know to, when I see a prophetic intercessor who cannot breathe, I'm like, like, hello, we've got a python issue. And so what we want to do, okay, is we want to go ahead and stand up right now. We're going to take a few minutes, and we're, we're, we're going to work through that in just a couple minutes here. And so, so, Lord, together we just repent and renounce and cast out the spirit of divination, okay, and that generational divination, and we command it to go in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you for your blood, and we ask your Holy Spirit to come and fill every place that divination has had a hold on us. And Lord, I pray over every single person here and even those listening online, Lord, that you would breathe into their nostrils the breath of life, fresh breath, God. Lord, that you would breathe life into their lungs so they can shout your name. Everybody shout. Amen. Lord, that, your, that their lungs would expand with your praise. Everybody praise.
And so we want to release the prayers, and we want to release the prophetic. And so Jesus said, when you pray, repeat after me, I will pray. I will pray. Repeat after me, we're a house of prayer. The Spirit of God has been poured out on, on you, so repeat after me. I will prophesy, have visions, and dream dreams. Say, we can all prophesy. Lord, I thank you for a fresh prophetic, a fresh release of the breath of the prophetic, a fresh release of intercession, Lord. In the Northeast, God, in this room, online, those who are here, I want you to put your hands over your mind right now. Just say, I have the mind of Christ. Lord, I break constriction off of their minds. I break confinements off of their minds. Lord, you said that we are coming out of confinement in this season. You are breaking all confinements. And so we receive collectively your mind. We have been invited into your thoughts, invited into your ways. Lord, I thank you. Lord, we will not be reduced, but we will only increase, God. And so, Lord, we thank you for that increase. Increase more and more, God. Us and our children and children's children everybody said amen. amen you can be seated the second thing he talked to me about was leviathan this is one of those things you are probably very familiar with it is scripturally known as the king of pride it is one of those things that is represented by a crocodile what does a crocodile do it hangs around the water right right it hangs around the river of the spirit its eyes just kind of show up at the top you know you just see its eyes floating on the the top of the waters and and so what is what is it looking for it's looking for a victim that it can take under the water and thrash until that victim give, gives up, right? And so Leviathan attacks intercessors. A thought, Leviathan attacks prophetic people. Why? Because of their wonderful revelations. They're wonderful revelations from the Lord. Unfortunately, there is a temptation with wonderful revelation to exalt ourselves above everybody else with our wonderful revelations, right? Get a little bit offended when somebody doesn't hear what I am saying from God, right? Okay, there is a temptation. And so this thing of pride begins to show up, and then we mask it with a lot of prayer. A lot of spiritual language. And it's something the Lord really wants to, wants to make sure that we are constantly looking at pride and constantly washing our feet of that pride, okay? Washing our feet, going low, uh, uh, and, and making sure that our heart is humble. Because when we are humble, that's when the Lord will lift you up. The Lord will put you in your high places, we want God to do that, not us, forcing our way, working our way up, okay? And so with that, uh, uh, you know, the, the thing about the Leviathan is that when, when the Leviathan is, is looking for a victim, it has to have a host. Pride starts as an attitude inside of us. But when there is an attitude, the door is open for the spirit to come in and take that one, and once that person has been hooked, usually through a fence, they cannot be reasoned with. Once they get hooked by Leviathan, the spirit, I'm not talking about the attitude. The attitude, if you're in the attitude phase, there's hope for you. But when the spirit comes, the demon comes and grabs you, okay, and you become the host for it, we rarely, if ever, get you back. They spin out in a fence and leave the fellowship because they are better than. And so the Lord uh, has given us a very clear path on how to deal with Leviathan. Uh, you know, first of all, don't be its host. Don't be its host. Amen? Can we say amen? <clears throat> All right, so I always want to check my heart, not in some sort of, uh, uh, you know, uh, I, I'm not trying to make, I'm not trying to uh, put myself into a place of false humility. I want to be everything that God says that I can be, but I am instructable, I am teachable, and I am correctable, and I am part of a community. Yeah. Amen? <clears throat> but if it shows up, and it be, through a person, if someone begins to host it and begins to attack you, there is a biblical, scriptural way to do this. 
And so what I'm going to invite you to do is if you are able to just get on your knees right now. <laughs> if you are able. Now, if you're not, it's, don't worry about it. If, if you don't have the physical capacity to do that, it's, it's fine. Just do it inside of your heart. But one of the things we do with Leviathan is we cannot fight pride with pride. Okay, this is what's destroyed social media. Okay, fighting pride with pride. So what we have to do is we have to go low in prayer. We have to go low in, pr in fasting. And we ask the Lord to do some things. Because it's the Lord who has to deal with it. Okay, it's God who has to deal with it. And so we ask the Lord to do some things. Job 41, 1. Lord, we ask that you hook it so it can't flee. We ask you, Lord, out of Psalm 74, 14, crush its heads so, so division will cease. We ask the Lord out of Isaiah 27, 1, to plunge his sword into it, which means he cuts it down with his word. And then we pray that Leviathan will not rise up against us from the outside or the inside. Amen? And so I had you get into this posture because I believe that when we humble ourselves before the Lord, the Lord will lift us up. And that's exactly what he wants to do with his people. Amen? You can go ahead and be seated again. I noticed that some of you are crawling kind of back into your seat. You got this. All right. The third one is unity. Psalm 133 New King James, behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It's like the precious oil on the head running down on the beard, the beard of Aaron, running down on the edge of his garments. It's like the dew of Hermon descending upon the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord commanded the blessing forevermore, life forevermore. I'll read it out of the New Living Translation, how wonderful and pleasant it is when brothers live together in harmony. Everybody say harmony. For harmony is as precious as the anointing oil poured on Aaron's head, running down his beard, on the border of his robe. Harmony is as refreshing, everybody say refreshing, as the dew from Mount Hermon falling on the mountains of Zion. And there the Lord pronounced his blessing, life everlasting. So we see uh, uh, Matthew 18, 19, which is what we're doing today. Again, I say to you, if two of you agree on earth concerning anything they ask, it'll be done for them by my Father in heaven. That word agree in the Greek is sympho symphonio. Symphonio. <laughs> I can't Greek it that well. Sounding together. In unison. In one accord. <laughs> agreeing with. Agreeing with purpose. Harmonizing. Uh, making an agreement. This prayer of agreement. Brothers living together in harmony. It's like a musical scale. Where we are, we are all in, in unison. We're not the same note, but we're in harmony. And Jesus is the bass note. He's the bass note. And we're, we're, we're you know, he, he's the foundation of our harmony. And so today, we let go of our offense. I give up my right to be offended. I want you to check your heart. I give up my right to be offended. Because it's a sound of dis, dis, dissonance. It's a dissonant sound in, in the, the community. And you say, but I have a right to it. Not today. <laughs> and so to be effectual, we're going to let that down. And you want to know the three blessings. The three blessings are the anointing. Everybody say anointing. The refreshing. And the Lord commands his blessing on the location where there is unity. Amen. And then the last one. I'm going to grab this picture. This thing spoke to me so hard in the worship. I don't know who made this. This is a beautiful illustration. But Elijah, this is my last one. I got five minutes. So I could do it. Elijah was a prophet that wanted to die. He wanted to die. You know, he had just left the big showdown. And he, you know, was threatened by someone who could make it happen. A credible source, a demonic source. 
and that threat got on the inside of him. And I want to speak today to people where death has gotten on the inside of you. And I was looking at this, and I know what the story is, and you can look at it a few different ways. But the way I interpreted this, I'm like, this is a woman. I wish we had a man version. But, but this is a woman, I'm like, who's torn up, but she's still clinging to Jesus. Okay? She's torn up. But this thing got on the inside of her. This thing about death. And, and I want to put it right here. I know not everybody can see it. Well, let me put it back here. But this thing where, where she's so desperate, and yet she's pulling on the life, the life flow of Jesus. And if that's you today, death has gotten on the inside of you. And every time I've come into this area, the second time now, I have felt this thing like ridiculous. Um, you know, still, um, I, I want to I speak some things over you. So if that's you, please don't be embarrassed, okay? Uh, we've all had these seasons. Can you please stand up? Um, because the Lord wants to break this thing off of you. He wants to get this thing out of you, okay? This thing, that's all right. If you got tears, it's all right, okay? Because this thing attacks anything that, that we're, we're prophets and prophetic people are gathered to get together. It's like, like Satan goes after the life flow. He goes after life because you are a life breather. You are a life giver. Your voice is life, okay? And if he can start getting on the inside of you with death, all right, then he can shut you down, if not get you out of here prematurely. And that is not the will of the Lord. And so I speak over you, Deuteronomy 30, that we choose life. We choose life that our descendants will live. Amen? That our children will live. And so I just, I speak the scriptures over you. Psalm 91, that with long life, he will satisfy you. And he will show you his salvation. Okay? Length of days, long life, he is adding to you. And I break the spirit of death. And I command it to leave you in Jesus' name. And we deal with death in this room region and we end this premature death we end suicide we end deathful thinking we destroy uh, uh, agreements with death he is breaking your covenants with death he is annulling your agreements with hell right now he is breaking these things off of you these things are shattering off of you Ch the chains of death are breaking off of you everybody say with me i choose life Say it again. I choose life. I will live and not die. I will praise the Lord. I will shout his praises. Lord, I just thank you for the fresh breath, the fresh wind of life coming into your people, coming into your prophets, coming into your intercessors, Lord. Lord, that we are life thinkers. We are life thinking individuals. We come out of agreement with death right now in Jesus' name. You've got to let this go, okay? You have to let this thing go. You are a Psalm 139, 16 person. He wrote a book on your life and every day counts. Every day has purpose. Every day matters. You're to live the fullness of each and every day. There we go. It's breaking, breaking right now. Lord, we just thank you for the breakthrough in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name.